Hi, welcome to this tutorial on sketching quadratic graphs. I'm going to take these four equations of graphs and I'm going to show you how we can sketch the graphs, locate maximum and minimum points, the equation of line of symmetry, just by completing the square. Now I'm going to divide this into two parts because the video is quite long. In the first part I'm going to concentrate on showing you how to sketch these two and in the second part how to do these two. Now, I would suggest you look at each part because it gives you the basic idea in the first part but in the second part the difference with these two equations is you'll notice we've got a minus x squared term instead of a plus x squared term in these two and in this one I've taken it from just minus x squared to a minus 2x squared, a number in front of the x squared. OK, I'm also assuming that you're familiar with completing the square. If not, do go back and look at my tutorials on my website. Just look on the index page for completing the square and I'll show you how to do questions like this, OK, how to complete them. Right, OK. Well, let's start first of all then with this first one. We've got y equals x squared minus 8x plus 6. Now, if you did complete the square for this, okay, what we would have is y equals, and you have a bracket, remember, you square the bracket and you put an x at the front and you halve the coefficient of x. So half of minus 8 is minus 4. If you were to square this out, you'd get x squared minus 8x plus 16. So you need to minus 10 in order to get that plus 6. Now we've completed the square and how does this help in sketching the graph of y equals x squared minus 8x plus 6? Well it's very easy. It relies on transformations of graphs. Let me show you. What we have is the basic graph f of x equals x squared. And you should know that one, the graph of f of x equals x squared is this one, y equals x squared if you like. Okay, parabola passes through the origin. Now, what I need to look at is how I can build this equation up from this base graph. If I replace the x here with x minus 4, in other words if I do f of x minus 4 then what I've got is essentially the graph of x minus 4 all squared. And what does this do to any graph? Well, you should know that it translates the graph parallel to the x-axis for units. So, in other words, if we just grab hold of this graph, we would move it four units to the right. Okay? So let's just mark in that point on the x-axis then as x equals 4. All right? So we've got that point there. Now we need to extend this equation because it's not just x minus 4 squared, it's minus 10. So in other words, if I was to minus 10 from here, I minus 10 from this side. And what I've now got is x minus 4 squared minus 10, which is what we have here, which is essentially this graph. But what does the minus 10 do? Well, it always translates the graph parallel to the y-axis, and in this case, because it's minus 10, it pulls the graph down 10 units. So what I need to do is, again, grab hold of that graph and just pull it down 10 units. But the question is, where does this graph, when I pull it down 10 units, cross the y-axis? Does it cross up here? Does it cross at the origin? Or does it cross below the x-axis, say here? Well, in order to answer that question, where does any graph cross the y-axis? Well, we know that the x-coordinate on the y-axis is always 0. So if we substitute x equals 0, either into this equation or this one, it will tell us where it crosses the y-axis. So if we put 0 into here, we've got 0 squared, which is 0, take away 8 times 0, which is 0, plus 6, which gives us 6. If we put 0 into here, we've got 0, take away 4, which is minus 4, square it, you've got 16, take away 10, 
gives you 6 again. So we know that the graph crosses the y-axis at 6, which is up here, say. So if I mark that in, okay, as a 6, then we know that this graph should go through this point, rather than just casually sketching it in. So, in other words, I need to grab hold of the graph again and just go back to here, move it 4 units to the right and 10 units down, but make sure that it goes through the 6 on the y-axis. So what I've got down here is a turning point, a minimum turning point, and so I can locate its coordinates. What I know is that that coordinate there would be 4 across and because we dropped the graph by 10 units it would now be at minus 10. 4 minus 10. And what about the equation of the line of symmetry? The equation of the line of symmetry would be up through here and because we moved it 4 units across it would be a line like that going through there. So, in other words, the equation of the line of symmetry would be the line x equals 4. So we can mark that in. And quite often on exam, uh, exam papers, in examination questions, you're asked to sketch graphs like this after completing the square and state the minimum turning points and the equation of the line of symmetry. So that's how I would suggest you go about it. OK, well let's turn our attention now to another one, y equals x squared plus 4x minus 1. We'll take this out, OK, and we'll start over again. So, we need to complete the square for this, and in the usual way, what we've got is y equals, have a square bracket, we halve the coefficient of x, it's plus 4, so we halve it, that gives us plus 2. If we square this out, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4, but in order to get minus 1, we need to subtract 5. So we look at the base graph of f of x equals x squared, and we know that that graph then is a parabola going through the origin, and we now build up our graph from this to build it into this. So we look at the essentially f of x plus 2. So in other words we replace the x in here with x plus 2 and what that's going to give us is essentially x plus 2 all squared. And what does this do to our original graph? Well because we've got plus 2 it doesn't shift it to the right, it shifts it to the left two units. So if we grab hold of that graph, shift it two units this time to the left, let's say it moves to there, then we can write that in that the x value here is at minus 2. Now we've got the minus 5, so what we need to do is subtract 5 from the f of x plus 2. Subtract 5, subtract 5, and we've got essentially our graph now of y equals x plus 2 all squared minus 5. But what did that minus 5 do to our graph here? It pulls it down 5 units. Again though, we need to know, instead of just pulling it down 5 units and randomly sketching the graph in, we need to know where it crosses the y-axis. So we do that again by putting x equals 0 either into this equation or this one. Put it into this one and you'll find you get minus 1. Again, if you put 0 into here, you've got 0 plus 2, which is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 take away 5, minus 1. So we know it crosses at minus 1. So I could assume that this point here is minus 1. So if I mark that in then, okay, as the point minus 1. Where is this minimum point? Well, we knew that we took the original graph, we slid it 2 units to the left and 5 units down. So this point here, the minimum point, will be at minus 2, minus 5. And for the equation of the line of symmetry, well, that's going to be essentially up through here. 
up through here going through the minus 2 meaning that the equation of the line of symmetry is going to be x equals minus 2. All right. Okay, so as I said earlier, this is part one of the tutorial. And in part two, I'm going to show you how we sketch these graphs then, one where we've got minus in front of the x squared, and also when we've got a number in front of the x squared. Okay.